The Rams might be looking to running back at the trade deadline. Russell Westbrook comes off the bench and manages not to hurt himself. Kudos. Well done. And who did the Dodgers fancy at shortstop if Trey Turner leaves? Well, the answer, here's a hint. If you can't cheat them, join them. Good morning. I'm James, and this is your daily dose of sports and start for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelinos. It's October 29th, 2022. I am continuing my weekend tour of random parking lots. Yes, the hotel I'm in is that stank. So we're gonna talk LA sports out here while I have the chance. If you like the content that we put out, click and clack the like button. Click and clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that, it'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring, let people know we exist. And yes, comments. Please do. It's lonesome when you're sitting in a parking lot. So, before we go through the news and notes from around LA, take a quick look at the scoreboard. Last night, the Lakers fell to 0-5. Ouch. They dropped a 111 to 102 decision at Minnesota. You might recall uh, before the year how Anthony Davis said this big goal of his was to play in all 82 games. Yes. Please take that writ prediction, wad it up, wipe your behinds with it. He sat out last night. He's not doing all 82. He had lower back issues. LeBron James, by the way, scored 28 points. Meanwhile, today, USC is back in action. They're gonna take on Arizona at four o'clock. There is a preview of that game on our USC playlist. In addition to that, Stanford is at UCLA at 7.30 p.m. There's a preview of that match on the UCLA playlist. And of course, Toronto is at the LA Kings at 4 p.m. Wow. Check this out. Remember how the Kings, for all those years, were responsible defensively? They have allowed an NHL most 39 goals so far this year. Not good. So, we've been kicking around ideas. I've been kicking around ideas about what the Rams are going to do for the trade deadline. I mean, if you're going to F the picks, you may as well figure out which direction you will be effing those picks, right? Late last night, Sports Illustrated, they have this website called The Spun. And The Spun is reporting that the Rams are working with Cleveland to trade for running back Kareem Hunt. Now, Cleveland has multiple running backs. They have uh, Chubb as well as Hunt. Hunt is like the little brother, for lack of a better term. So Cleveland knows that they have an excess. They're trying to get an extra asset out of it. The Browns would probably want a fourth rounder. Now, that is according to ESPN. Now, having said that, if it is only a fourth rounder, it's not exactly effing the picks. Could it be possible that the Rams might be looking for bigger game? Than Kareem Hunt. The trade deadline, by the way, is Tuesday. And just to refresh everybody's memory and for you to also add your thoughts in the comments thread, I'm suggesting they go pass rush. Now, I will grant you that some of the bigger names are already off the board. Robert Quinn is a no. He is a former Ram. He was traded to Philly. Carolina also has been turning down many offers for linebacker Brian Burns. But if there is a possibility out there, possibility. One that you really might want to F your picks over? Linebacker Bradley Chubb of Denver. He has five and a half sacks. He has one. He is on the final year of his rookie contract, so you could theoretically squeeze him under the cap, and the Broncos are two and five. Other positions? Honestly, I didn't think running back was as much of a need as pass rush. Same for wide receiver and offensive line, because they are getting wide receivers back. They are getting offensive linemen back. So we'll have to find out what the Rams think after their game against the Niners tomorrow. Speaking of the 49ers, wide receiver, or as they like to call him, the wide back, Debo Samuel, will be out Sunday. He has a hamstring issue. And by the way, so will defensive lineman Arik Armstead. Now granted, the bigger loss... I would argue is Samuel, he's been a Rams killer. They line him up at wide receiver. 
they'll use him as a they'll use him in running plays and he's not just fast he's just so tough to bring down so even if you stuck Jalen Ramsey on him you Ramsey would have to hit the man pure or else he's going to need help to put him to the turf that's a problem that the Rams will not have tomorrow Russell Westbrook, as I mentioned earlier, came off the bench for the Lakers on Friday, and the, and the team will continue to have him there until further notice. Now, he scored 18 points, but overall, this broke a streak of 1,007 consecutive starts. That was third in the NBA behind Chris Paul and LeBron James. Now, the funny thing is, I was reading all these side stories about him, about how the Lakers were just, oh, they were just praising Westbrook, praising him for coming off the bench. But what the reporters call praise, I'm going to call patronizing. Right? Oh, hey, thanks, dude. Thanks for actually not clogging the offense, not dragging it to a halt. Thanks a lot. Thanks for letting LeBron be LeBron and you can be you on your time. Because you're not as good as LeBron. I mean, thanks for not injuring yourself this time. Thanks for not claiming you got it. It's patronizing. Praise. We've really dumbed down the definition of praise, don't you think? Why not just give Russ a participation award like we do for every kid who bothers to put on a baseball cap in a Little League game now? According to John Heyman of the New York Post, if Trey Turner leaves the Dodgers, and yes, there is a distinct possibility that that happens. There have been stories about how Trey Turner would prefer to play on the East Coast, but if that does happen, the Dodgers would pursue Carlos Correa. Yes. Carlos Correa of the 2017 fraudulent champion Houston Astros. That Carlos Correa. Apparently the front office just loves his game. I think he'd be a fine addition to the offense. You know where I'm going. I don't even have to say it. Quinton Byfield of the Kings will miss his second game of the season tonight with an undisclosed illness. And I bring that up because there's been talk about, you know, is his progress coming just a little too slow for what everybody else wants? Maybe so. But Gabe Velarde was the 11th overall pick in 2017. That was five years ago. We were wondering when that guy was gonna blossom, right? Now, Gabe Velarde, welcome to the big time. You, sir, at least in practice, have been promoted to the number one line with Adrian Kempe and Andrzej Kopitar. And yes, if you're a Kings fan and you're saying, wait a minute, does that mean Kevin Fiala got demoted from the top line? The answer is yeah. So, maybe there is something to be said for Byfield not necessarily blowing up as quickly as we'd like him to. Now, Velarde, he, by the way, he has six goals and four assists in nine games. Offense isn't necessarily the problem for the Kings. We mentioned that a few minutes ago. Ethan O'Connor who plays both cornerback and wide receiver for Los Alamos High School, has committed to play for UCLA football. He made the commitment on Friday. Now, they recruited him to play cornerback. He's six foot one, 170 pounds. Uh, last year, he had two interceptions, five pass deflections. He is a five-star recruit. He is the eighth such recruit in UCLA's uh, high school recruiting class in 2023. So they're going to be happy with him. ESPN has asked if LAFC has cured its growing pains from signing Gareth Bale. If by that you mean not playing Gareth Bale, then yes, I guess you kind of say that the uh, patient has become 
much healthier, that he has overcome growing pains by not playing Gareth Bale. Yes, growing pains are over for LAFC. Bring on puberty. Growing pains just because you added Gareth Bale. The man is on the bench. Paul George of the Clippers has donated $3 billion in free therapy for mental health awareness. He said he became aware of how legit mental health issues can be because he was battling anxiety and depression in the Orlando COVID bubble. He described being in the Orlando COVID bubble as, quote, his pit, unquote. And as tempting as it is to crack a lame Disney, my pit is the small world ride joke, I'm going to pass because I understand. Mental health is definitely a thing these days. Now, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We do talk LA sports here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corta El Queso production. Take care.